right? Now, what we want to touch on, however, is a, uh, sorry, I won't say dumbed down version, but a very lightweight version of SQL, uh, the, the commercial SQL, which can handle remote servers and also resident server, right? So our SQL is called SQL Lite, and it's a sort of a freeware version uh, that is available for download. So go download uh, or, or go for SQL Lite uh, database or SQL Lite download, and you can download and install. I would also like you to install SQL Lite Studio, right? SQL Lite Studio, and search for that and download and install. It's very painless. Just click and go. So just download and install SQL Lite Studio. That will allow us to sort of operate on SQL Lite database uh, very painlessly. If you don't have, it's really painful, right? So why lightweight? The sort of lightweight version is not meant to um, cheapen the functionality so that you are very enticed, but then you can't really do much serious work. No, that's not true, all right? So the lightweight version is meant for um, resident database together with your application, which is what we are trying to do now. So for example, we have a pandas and we really want data to be read in, but the data to be read in is not from Excel, not from HTML, but from very uh, efficiently stored database, uh, which for example, can be SQLite. So we would like the data to be stored in SQL form, but we don't want a remote server. So then there'll be a problem, right? Uh, so can we have an efficient, lightweight version that kind of accompanies our program? Yes, and the answer is yes. So, so that is the reason why. So being lightweight is by no means a, a crippled version, right? right? It's, it's still very, very powerful. Uh, all, the es all the essence, I almost say it's all the nonsense, um, all the essence of server, network access, remote computer, because you're remote, you have to be worried about what are what about hackers, right? Hackers who try to hack into the SQL server can steal a lot of information almost immediately. How do you uh, verify, authenticate? And SQL server uh, uh, gradually becomes bloated with the burden of verifying the user's login. Are you who you claim you are? So that becomes, uh, that, that makes the, the sort of full-fledged SQL a bit bulky and a bit hard to maintain. You really need full-time uh, personnel and, and really skilled uh, people to maintain to ensure that not only your data and integrity is there, but the whole other issues like your network settings are correct, your user accounts are, are secure, your passwords are not uh, uh, stored unencrypted and so on and so forth. Right, so, so it's quite burdensome. If we are, Having the SQL together with our application in the same computer, same memory, then it's pretty much a local application. That means, for example, the user has already logged in. That's why you can gain access to the program. So therefore, this SQL Lite, being a lightweight version, being resident in the same app, uh, computer as the application, really can just do away with a whole bunch of authentication codes, user account maintenance codes, and so on and so forth. So, because of that, it's really no nonsense, lean and mean and very fast because it's exactly just the code that stores and accesses your data. All right? So that's the whole point of having this SQL light. And its advantage uh, and its lightweightness is beginning to be appreciated as advantage rather than a disadvantage. So SQL, structured query language. Really popular, but do remember that it is a language. It is not a, a, a library module. Uh, it is a language in and of itself. And it started uh, maybe around the same time or even before Python. And it's gone through a lot of uh, maturization, maturization uh, or getting into maturity. And uh, various flavors of SQL and, and, and uh, special versions of SQL commands uh, can be found in different vendor offerings. So if you have SQL written exploiting certain you know, enhancements in Oracle SQL database, for example, it might not be portable over to uh, Microsoft SQL and so on and so forth. So by and large, the language 
needs to be uh, as as standardized as possible. So try to stick to uh, the, the main commands and then that will make your SQL codes more portable. Okay. Now, uh, just to give a general idea, we're not getting down to the uh, hands-on integrities, but the general idea is that we uh, read and write data. Yeah, We read and write data from and to the SQLite database. So, so from here on, if I say SQL database, just you know, uh, repeat in your in your mind that I'm referring to SQLite database. Yeah. So, uh, the read is always select, very simple, right? So when we say I want to get access, just type a select. That will start the reading command. But read from where? Read how much? What are the columns? What are the rows? Right. So, so that would be the details here. But essentially, it's read all the columns from which table where certain conditions hold. So, so we just issue that or run that command. Um, it will sort of gain access to the SQLite database, which will interpret the command and uh, do the right thing. So, in other words, we touch the actual data via SQLite database. And can think of the database also as a uh, as a program. So the program will guard all the query. Now, if your language is going to sort of uh, make certain, um, uh, maybe your language being issued, your, your SQL being issued, ends up having certain integrity issues. It will corrupt the data or you, you decide to undo certain changes or whatnot. Then SQL database, does support that as well. So there is value added in having this layer here. Then when we need to write into the database, well, just use insert and update. We'll get into these two commands uh, in much more details later on. But insert into, all right, that's one command, which table and with what uh, row wise, what are the column values? So insert one row, always insert by row. Always in search by row. When we update, we are updating one, uh, zero, one or more rows. Okay, and uh, for the row, for each of the rows that are affected, which columns are to be updated to what values, and then it can also be, uh, that the condition will filter out any rows that are not wanted. Okay, so the idea of having SQLite is that uh, in the concept, SQLite has a database in mind. In each database, there are zero, one or more tables. So we can create, uh, we can have no table and have an empty blank database waiting to be developed. We can create one or more tables and then we can delete the tab tables. And, and think of table like a pandas data frame. So for those of you who have, who have already revised the pandas uh, data analytics videos, so think of a table in SQLite as if it were a pandas data frame. It's almost one-to-one -one correspondence there, almost. But there are you know little bit of uh, things that are different. But almost one-to-one, -one, right? And for those of you who kind of skipped the pandas data frame or, or want to only view it later on, fine. But you might have already used Excel and so think of each table as an Excel spreadsheet. You know, the worksheet, one tab, one tab of the spreadsheet is one table. And just like Excel, with multiple tabs in a file, Excel calls it a workbook, which essentially is a file, right? And likewise, because the database contains multiple tables and nothing else, you cannot have, you know, dangling pieces of strings hanging around without a table containing them. So a database is like having a bunch of spreadsheets and so it is itself like an excel workbook okay so as simple as that so excel workbook is a database excel worksheet is a table or the other way around a table is a worksheet database is a workbook or the file and in each uh, table we will of course have multiple columns and C sql or the way it's being pronounced sql uh, is very column oriented. So every column has a data field, all right, basically defining what uh, data type all the entire column cells must contain. And when we insert or delete, every time it's operating by row, 
right? Inserting a new row, deleting a row. So the idea is each column contains a field like a name, address, postal code, and all the names must be of the same type, right? Straight. All the all the income salary will be of floating point type. A little bit like pandas as well. That's why I say they are quite one-to-one -one correspondence. So uh, each column has the same data type. And when we operate, we operate on a row basis. So we insert one row, we delete one row. Where in real life, one row corresponds to like one member, one person, one transaction. So one person has name, address, income, right? One transaction has serial number, amount purchased, and uh, date, for example. I'm just giving a few fields for, for illustration. You know, of course, the real uh, table design will be a bit more complicated than this, or, or at least not so simple. Now, the way we describe the columns, what is the name of the column, what data type does it contain, uh, and so on. Can it be, must all the values in the, in the column be unique? Must they be unique all the time? Are they used as primary key, foreign keys, and so on and so forth. All that information about the design of the table is stored in a piece of uh, uh, text called schema. So whenever we have a piece of description about the table, it is called a schema. A schema. So in, in Python, we don't have a schema, but we have data types. So, so we don't use the word schema to describe computer programming language right so there's a little bit of a little bit of a, a gray area there but it's quite clear that when we look at SQLite uh, it is more like a document because it's mostly essentially data and so the schema describes this table design so for example here we have three columns first column second column third column in that order right and the first column is called ID second column name third column address and we might want to store string, string, string for these three data types. That is that the whole description is called a schema. Right? So keep in mind this database is a file. Database contains tables and each table must have information about the columns and the types and all that. And that collection of information about the table design is called a schema.